people are doing whatever the fuck they can to get the pythons out of the Everglades. Mm -hmm. they, these assholes have released pythons, and there's a, a real fucking redneck Jurassic Park going on in the middle of Florida. Yeah. You know, we, we care. When I first came to South Florida, I was quickly introduced to the state's environment, people, and personas. I experienced the Everglades firsthand, from the wading egrets to alligators, and from the mangroves to the manatees, I had seen it all. But nothing captured my interest more than the story of the invasive Burmese python. I had seen the videos of the stereotypical Florida man, and furthermore, I had seen the likes of Python Cowboy and other media-produced redneck Floridians. But it wasn't until I met the likes of Mike Kirkland, Kevin Pavlilidis, and Ryan Osborne that I understood the people who hunt pythons. This is the story of pythons and python hunters in South Florida. You can go to Everglades National Park and be hard pressed to find a single mammal there, a single squirrel, a single rabbit, fox, deer. The pythons have just been taking out Whoa. everything that they can okay. get their mouths around. My name is Mike Kirkland, and I'm the South Florida Water Management District's Senior Invasive Animal Biologist, and I manage the Python Elimination Program. Pythons pose direct impacts to these restoration efforts of ours, and that's why Python management has become part of our core mission. It is the most successful management program in the history of the invasion by a wide margin. Um, as of just moments ago, we're now caught, this program alone has now caught um, 5,632 pythons since we started in 2017. Our executive director back in January of 2017, or executive director at the time, um, saw a viral video of a python holding an alligator underwater and drowning it in Big Cypress National Preserve before it consumed it. And our executive director became very upset after watching this video. He called up our um, Land Resources Bureau, that's the bureau I work in, um, our, our bureau chief called him upstairs into his office and uh, said we needed to do something about pythons. We have uh, 50 contractors. It's highly competitive to become selected to be one of our contractors. We literally have thousands of applicants from all over the world who want to participate. Ryan Osborne has been with us since day one. Um, he's um, he has a tough exterior, um, uh, but he uh, is also an extremely talented artist and craftsman. Uh, he, he made my wallet here, for instance. Um, he makes um, uh, a lot of unique products out of pythons. Kevin Pavlidis is um, another member of our team and um, is one of the most talented snake catchers I've ever seen. Um, Together, they're an extremely uh, powerful team, and um, they both um, are characters and have uh, really fun personalities, and uh, I enjoy working with both of them. All right, check out a slithery surprise in a Coral Gables neighborhood. Yes, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Burmese python. Burmese python. Burmese pythons. Giant pythons. Massive pythons. Burmese pythons. So my name is Kevin Pavlidis and my title is Python Contractor with South Florida Water Management and uh, I'm also a professional alligator wrestler at Everglades Holiday Park. We have a major roof platform system put in with light bars and everything so we can actually elevate ourselves uh, to a maximum of, at its maximum height I can get my eyes 14 feet off the ground and what that really helps you do is when all that tall grass is there, instead of trying to look through it, I can look down into it, which provides a much better field of view. So my job as a Python contractor is to go out, you know, freelance whenever I think it's right, whenever I have the time, and target and remove as many Burmese pythons as physically possible. The first thing I always consider is obviously time of year. The snakes obviously go through patterns throughout the year as they cyclically go through the seasons. So for most of the year, we're, pr we're primarily targeting them at night and there's kind of 
you know, most of that is when they're actually feeding, looking for prey items so they can stock up and just consume and grow and stuff like that, especially prepping um, for the winter season, which is always less food for them. All right, so we're on our first python of the night. As you can see, it's this, you know, relatively small python, but big as far as our native snakes go. And uh, so this is a juvenile, you know, probably around the two year old mark and uh, spotted it stretched out along a vegetation edge, spotting this mid body pattern and catching a little bit of that bluish iridescence you might see to it. Um, so this snake was obviously on the crawl. It was hunting at night looking for small rodents and stuff like that. And when we come up on these pythons, we always want to get a head grab as fast as possible because that's how we really maintain control of them. The more you dial in the biology of the animal and try and figure it out, the better you're going to be at actually finding those animals. So taking all of those factors and combining them together and using that knowledge to make you a more efficient hunter, all of those factors come together to result in the success that we hope for. Brian and I have been top producers for quite a while now, and um, you know we're not we're not saying that as a point of arrogance. That's just we catch a lot of snakes and significantly more than other people. And I think one of the big things is coming from a background of reptiles. We're catching snakes since we were toddlers. We love it. We've been dialing it in since we could walk. I pretty much have always caught over 100 pythons a year. Uh, 368 was an exceptional year. The water levels were really high. Everything was phenomenal. We had really high temps. All the weather and all the environmental factors were perfect for us to catch a lot of snakes that year. And that was my record, which might be the record that anybody's ever caught in a year. The first four feet of Python is $25, $50 automatically. So, you know, for, if you catch a snake, the hatchlings are about two feet. So any snake between two feet and four feet, $50 automatically. Once you get over four feet, it's $25 a foot. So it's $25 for this additional foot, $25 for this additional foot. And uh, so a 10 foot snake works out to be about $200. So in terms of length, the longest python I've ever caught uh, was the record breaker that Ryan and I caught together. It was 18 feet, nine and a quarter inches, weighed 104 pounds. They saw this python. What? Ryan Osborne and Kevin Pavlidis knew what? she was something special. I was like, oh my God. That thing is massive. <laughs> That's a once in a great while, if not once in a lifetime catch, to be honest with you. Go, baby, let's go. They were hunting the invasive species in the Florida Everglades when they spotted this. Oh my God, that thing's beautiful. A Burmese python they suspect will break records. And that thing dwarfs everything I've seen before. And the heaviest python I've ever caught was actually in the same year, but it was. 17 feet, seven and a half inches long, weighed 152 pounds. I've gotten so used to the, just the pure adrenaline of getting into those situations. I perform very well under pressure. So when you look out there and you see a hundred plus pound snake, the reality is that while most people would be really nervous, the most, the biggest thing I'm nervous about is that snake getting away. Once you actually start engaging with it, your veins start pumping, your blood is going like crazy, adrenaline's hormones, like you just so dialed in in the zone, like you just don't even think about it anymore. Uh. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, broke. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, broke. Get down, girl, go ahead, get down. Get down, girl, go ahead, get down. Baby Louis Vuitton under her underarm She said, I could tell you rock, I could tell by your charm Fars girls, you gotta flock, I could tell by your charm and your arm But I'm looking for the one, have you seen her? My psychic told me she have an act like Serena, Trina, Gina, for Lopez, four kids And I gotta take Uh, these snakes are masters of camouflage And that is, ex and they're very, very secretive They're very cryptic That is exactly why you need specialized contractors like myself and Ryan to actually track these snakes because they're not easy. Most of the snakes that we catch get put down immediately. 
Um, and that's something that's really kind of bittersweet. It's very heartbreaking for us because for me personally, I've been working with Burmese pythons in captivity since I was 11 years old. They're beautiful snakes. I love them. They're incredible animals. But when they're here, they're an environmental disaster and they have to be removed to prevent the further damage to our ecosystem and all those native animals that get consumed every year by pythons. So we try not to let much go to waste. So there's a lot of you know, products like Ryan always, is always working on skins and making products out of them, trying to recycle a lot of that you know, materials that it's an unfortunate situation that we're left with the option of euthanasia, but we try to use lives as much as we possibly can. But something interesting to note with that is that while Burmese pythons are prolific in Florida and a major issue in their native range, due to habitat fragmentation, exploitation for skin trade and all that, they're actually in danger throughout most of their native range. And here in Florida, we simply can't get rid of them. And the biggest thing to note is that invasive species is actually the second leading cause for global extinction of species right below habitat loss. This, this is not a fight against snakes, it's a fight against invasive species. To be honest, I expected from these men what I had seen already from others. I expected vulgarity, ignorance, and a disregard for wildlife. But what I came to realize over the course of my time with them was that they were exactly the opposite. Their job is an art form filled with intricacies that I never even considered. What they do is a craft, and they perfect their craft through science. They endure the worst conflicts in conservation, and in doing so, embrace the beauty of such a magnificent creature.